What's up, everybody? This is Jay the Wanderer with Oakland Latinos Unidos, a.k.a. Oakland Latinos United, the voice of the Latino community in the Bay Area, California, YouTube, and beyond. Today, I'm over here in Richmond, and today, uh, we're temporarily Richmond Latinos United. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I, I met right here uh, a local activist who's been doing a lot of community work here for Richmond, especially for the Chicano Latino community in Oakland and in Richmond. And um, what's your name? My name is Andres Soto. And uh, you're from born and raised in Richmond, right? I was born in Berkeley, but I moved to Richmond, Sao Paulo when I was a year and a half old, so basically I've been here all my life. Okay. And uh, me, I lived out here for a short time, uh, from 97 till 2002, but I'm from the Fruitvale community. But I have, okay. but Richmond's like a second home to me, so you know, I, my mom and dad lives out here, so I'm always out here. I go between uh, Oakland and Richmond. So uh, what kind of community work have you done for the community? Well, really, I guess uh, most of my community work started when I first got out of college. So I'm, I've been involved with helping to develop Promote Cinco de Mayo uh, events to celebrate our culture and our community and politicize our community. Uh, I was the chair of the Bilingual District Advisory Committee for 15 years in the school district, advocating for the needs of limited English students. Uh, I've been a victim of police violence, so uh, I've been an advocate for uh, you know more uh, police accountability. I also uh, helped found an organization called the Richmond Progressive Alliance to unite uh, progressive-minded people, regardless of their party, to try to impact the, the body politic of the city of Richmond and to impose more of a uh, progressive slant on our politics instead of the traditional corporatocracy that oppresses and serves to, you know, help injure our people, yeah. injure our people's health, our people's mental health, uh, to keep the violence in the community flaring, to keep communities divided. So I'm against all of that. I've been working to try to, to ameliorate that. I'm, I'm very familiar with, the, with what happened to you in 2002. You want to talk about that? Yeah, well, you know, uh, starting in uh, uh, the, well, in the late 90s, the city's uh, single mile would be down at the Civic Center. Well, 2002, they shut down the street, and I'm a musician, and I was playing at the Berkeley single mile, and I came over here, and I saw that the street was closed down the street, so me and my sons came down to 23rd and Lowell, we live on Lowell, yeah. and these cops confronted us, telling us to turn around and go home, and I know, you know, I just asked some questions, I said, why is the street blocked, you know, why is the street closed, and uh, in the end, they surrounded us, and they beat us, and pepper sprayed us, took us to jail, we were the first uh, Mexicanos in jail that night, so we did what like, comes natural, started organizing in jail. Yeah. And we got some other plaintiffs, another family, father with two sons, uh, and some other people, and we had a federal civil rights lawsuit against the city of Richmond. We achieved a settlement in 2004 when I was running for city council. Yeah. Uh, the, the Chevron and the police union and the fire union got so afraid, they outspent me 10 to 1 just to keep me out of office, yet I almost got elected. But yeah. I didn't go in, and I've been involved in helping to fight the uh, checkpoints here in Richmond yeah. that target Latinos, even though it was originally designed to try to reduce homicides yeah. and interdict guns. And, uh, you know, so uh, I'm right now, this is single a mile here in Richmond 2009, and this is uh, our heel zone. So right now my day gig is I'm the project director for Heal, which is Healthy Eating Active Living based here at the neighborhood house in North Richmond. Okay. And so these are all our partners and we're trying to impact uh, policy and patterns of practice in the schools, in the healthcare sector, in the community and in work sites to improve the physical health and the food uh, choices and the food security in our community. Uh, one of our projects is this uh, healing garden across the street. So we got preschoolers coming out here planting food and uh, tasting fresh produce. Uh, we even get some of the residents up here who are in alcohol and drug treatment to come out and help out and maintain the place. So all right. we're trying to integrate all these folks in our community. All right, I got two more major questions and I'll leave you alone. <laughs> One's going to be kind of controversial, not too much controversial, but kind of you remember the whole RPOA scandal. Who can oh, yeah. forget that? Right, right. And for those who don't know, I've made a video about the RPOA scandal, but that was a, a letter that the Richmond Police Officers Association sent out trying to smear your name, the mayor's name, Juan Reardon's name. and uh, political. Very, yeah, and, you know, it was it was backed by, by Nat Bates and um, 
Chris Calarico and a couple other people out there. Believe it or not, I was there at that city council meeting. Uh -huh, yeah. I don't know if you remember seeing me there, but I was there, bro. I didn't get to speak because they ran out of so many people. I got there kind of late, so I, right, 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 I didn't get a chance to speak. Yeah, yeah. But if I would have spoke, it would it would have been ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, what do you think, in a, you know, besides what happened, me personally, bro, and I'm going to ask you this question. Sure. I thought it really surprised me, and it really, like, made me proud of how a big solidarity of different races came together to denounce that letter. Blacks, Latinos, Asians, whites, everyone basically of every nationality in Richmond and the Bay Area came to denounce that letter. What did you think about that solidarity personally? Well, that solidarity didn't happen by accident. That solidarity was really a result of the work of progressives here in Richmond over a number of years. Yeah. And so we just put out the call. Yeah. It was so offensive that anybody who looked at it, who you know had any sensitivity, understood that it was an anti-Latino mailer. Yeah, and, and they were that, trying to pin blacks against Latinos right. in like, that mailer. Yeah, because they're trying. To, there's some African Americans who felt that by the Latinos organizing to get the city police department to stop the checkpoints, that somehow that was uh, giving preferential treatment to Latinos. Yeah. And you know, but you know, some people's minds you can't change them. But those people who are African Americans who understood that this is the same kind of tactics they used against black people yeah. in the 70s and yeah. the 60s, 80s, that they stood with us. Yeah. We also knew that we had Asians who felt the same way and white people who understood that. And so by uniting, by showing that united <laughs> front, we were able to do several things. One was get the city to back off on checkpoints temporarily, but more importantly, we were able to create a win between those members of the city council who are supported by the Richmond Police Officers Association and the Richmond Firefighters Association, and particularly the Latinos like John Marquez and yeah. and Pedro Lopez, and educate the people that these guys are more afraid of their patrons than they are afraid of the wrath of their own community. Yeah. They felt the wrath of the community, and John Marquez is no longer on the city council. Lucmena Lopez and uh, Maria Mira, Mira 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 are, are running in 2010, and they're trying hard to repair that damage. Uh, frankly, nothing has changed because all those people also sold this out to Chevron last summer on that whole you know energy renewal process. Yeah. <laughs> So that blood is on their hands. Yeah. And that blood is going to be on their hands. And so it's our responsibility to educate the public as to who made those votes. Yeah. Us, the people. Yeah. Are you going to run for city council or anything like that? In 2010, I probably will not. I haven't uh, made any future plans beyond that. Right now, I'm uh, enjoying playing music all over the place. <laughs> what kind of music do you play? Uh, well, I play the whole saxophone family. I play flute, clarinets, I play everything. I play salsa, classical, I play jazz, I play Latin rock, funk. What yeah. salsa bands you play with? Because I know a lot of them. I play with Son de Caña, which is mostly yeah. Nick Yeah, Nick I, I heard of them before. And I play with a couple of Latin rock bands called Lava. One of them yeah. is called Mestizo. Yeah, I heard of Mestizo. Yeah. I'm, I'm really familiar with it because I, I, I got all the old Malo, oh, Santana, yeah, 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 yeah. Sapo, and all the old shit. Yeah, yeah. The old Bay Area stuff. Yeah, well, for me, Cinco de Mayo is a great time to be a Chicano musician. I call it Chicano Musicians New Year's. Yeah. Because most musicians in the United States get paid extra and get real busy around New Year's, right? Yeah. Well, for Chicano musicians, it's Cinco de Mayo is when we get busy and we get paid a little extra. So That's cool. So well, it's, let's, let's go to Cinco de Mayo, and that'll be my last question. What do you think of the turnout today for Cinco de Mayo? And do you think there's going to be any problems on the actual Cinco de Mayo? Uh, first <coughs> question. I don't think there's going to be any problems on the real single day mile because history has shown that there will be some people driving up and down 23rd, 23rd. with their flags, and but they're not bothering anybody, yeah. and it's not mass crowds because everybody had their party on Sunday, Okay. and that's just the pattern that people seem to be Yeah, practicing. yeah. Now, the bigger picture is that this is fantastic. Uh, the Cinco de Mayo has emerged as the biggest celebration in the city of Richmond. You know why I it think there's a... It outstrips Juneteenth and it outstrips uh, Homefront Festival by yeah. exponentially. You know why I think there's more people this year? Because some idiot in Oakland decided not to do a Cinco de Mayo festival in the Fruitvale area, and that's why I'm here. I'm from the Fruitvale area, but I, like I said, I have a lot of ties with Richmond. So some genius out there decided not to do one. So well, here I'm Richmond. hanging out in Richmond. So 
It's Richmond last Solidarity. <laughs> no, last year it was a huge crowd, and I think this is building on that. The fact that they didn't do one in Oakland probably helps us a little bit. Yeah. But most of these people are Richmond people. Yeah. And San Pablo. Yeah, and uh, the Latino community in Richmond's gotten big and strong over like the what the last 20 years. Yeah. And uh, even though we've been here since. Dirt. Going back to, to before Richmond was even here. Yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's, it's good to see this happening in Richmond today. It's good to see Richmond and Oakland are very similar cities. We're both underdog cities that get basically stepped on by everyone, but we're strong community cities right. and working class cities right. and progressive cities. Yeah. You know, and, and me, my, my, my whole progressiveness and my Chicanoism and my revolutionary status is because I'm from the Bay Area, I'm from Oakland, and, and I hung out in Richmond. Right. Right. But I'm out of time, bro. It's good talking to you. Good, I'm glad I got to meet you, bro. I've heard a lot about you. You probably will hear a lot about me now. I'm Jay the Wanderer from Oakland, California, signing off. Right good on. talking to you, bro. Thank you, bro.